Okay, I'm going to talk about how to do a multi-level sort inside of Thinkorswim. As you start building out codes and wanting to use the scanner, you're going to find that when you go to try to sort this, it's very difficult to do. You're going to hit a lot of speed bumps. It's very confusing. And uh, so we're going to talk about what's possible, what's not possible, and uh, how to do a uh, secondary scan on this. So before we get into that, let's discuss the data limitations of the scanner. Uh, so there are two types of general columns that we can add to the scanner. One is going to have an icon next to it, and the other is not. And so the ones that don't have an icon next to it are things that are built in by Thinkorswim, and there's uh, no data limit on it. And then the ones down here are custom uh, columns, and so these some of these are made by Thinkorswim, and you can see a little lock on them. And those are that are made by them, but they're also subject to a limit on the amount of data they can pull. And then your custom scripts are the ones that you can code yourself, and they are also subject to the data limit. The data limit right now is about 1,100 uh, tickers for uh, one column, and then if you add more columns, it's going to cut that in half. So you add two, it's going to be uh, 550 tickers. About uh, if you do three, it's going to be about uh, you know whatever that is, 375 a piece. Here's a visual that can help drive this home. So the built-in data columns, those are going to be the ones right here: your description, your symbol, your last, and then your custom code data columns. Those are going to be the ones with the little icon next to it. So when we think about ways to use the scanner, we're going to have to know that we're not going to be able to hit scan on a certain parameter and have it look through the entire market of you know, 10,000, 20,000, however many tickers there are in the software and have it returning data for uh, multiple custom columns that we created ourselves. That's not going to be possible. So the recommended way to do it is to just gather a list of tickers that you like to follow that uh, you trade on frequently and you think are strong for your strategy. Create it into a, a list, uh, a watch list, and then over here with intersect with, you'll see it's defaulted to none. We'll come here and choose that list. And so for me, it's going to be default. I've got 22 tickers on here just for example purposes. Um, and so we're going to be able to do multiple custom columns on here. And it's going to be for each column, we're going to be pulling 22 pieces of data. So we're not going to even come close to the 1100 limit. And uh, we're going to be able to do a lot of different columns. So let's talk about sorting this. So I'm going to use the term primary sort and secondary sort. A primary sort is that very first sort that it does. And we indicate that by going up here to header columns. And then we can left click on this. And the first click is going to sort it ascending. You're going to see a little up arrow for ascending. Uh, second click will sort it descending, a little down arrow for descending, and then third will set it back to uh, no sort at all. So this is going to be the primary sort. It's going to look here first. It's going to sort all of these tickers based on uh, whatever you indicate here first. And so what we want to do is, for a secondary sort, so let's say we had uh, the earning date on here, and we sort this ascending and so we have the earning dates going from earliest to latest but we have a bunch of tickers with the same result here how do we sort this group that has the same value and so we'd like to go to a second column and say look uh, if they're all the same sort it by the, the the last stock price so the smallest one first and then the largest one last so we're going to do that by coming up here into the sorted by box. And this is where we're going to indicate how we want it to sort uh, for these ties. And so if we want to do it last. We're going to come right here to basic price and quotes, choose last. There's six columns here. The first four are built-in columns. So 
these are ideal because you're not going to have a data limit on this and we're not going to have to adjust the code to get it to work. So all we got to do is come in here, choose last, choose ascending, we'll scan it. And now the one thing you'll notice here is if we look here, it's still indicating on this primary sort as ascending, but if you look here, we see we've got 824 here. So it's done, it's changed this to like a primary sort over here. It's now primary sorting on the last. And so to make this the primary sort again, we just come up here, we're just gonna do this three times. One, two, three, and now the earning date is sorting uh, the primary sort again, and then it's secondarily sorting uh, the, the ones that are the same based on this last column over here. So you see here on these 919s, 82 is the smallest, and 864 is the largest. So the two down here, I don't recommend even using the sixth one because these are just wrong. They don't work. You can give them a shot yourself, but for me, they don't sort correctly at all. And so number five are going to be the ones that you create yourself. And so these are going to be all the ones that you've made. And we can see that some of these are clickable and some of them are not clickable. And so why are some of these clickable and some of these are not? And so the answer is in the way you code it. Let me come to this document here. So we have two ways that we can code it to get the data to show on the scanner. One is with a plot and the second is with an add label. Now on a chart, these things do two completely separate things. A plot would just plot a line on a chart and an add label would add a little small label up in the top left of the chart. But for the scanner and the watch list, both of these are going to plot or uh, return the same data in the scanner and watch list. But the difference between these two is that on a plot, you're only going to be able to do numbers. And so they're going to be read by the software as a, as a number. It is also called a double in the software. And then the add label is only going to be text. This is called a string in the software. And so it's going to be able to secondarily sort numbers, but it's not going to be able to secondarily sort text. So to show an example here, come over to customize, and I'm going to open up a, a custom one that's available uh, for you. If you've never written anything here, you're going to find these under custom. I'm going to choose available. So I'm going to do plot C equals close, and this is just going to return us a basic close. And you can see I'm using plot here, and so that's going to return a number. And so say OK. If we come over here to our custom scripts, we should see available as being clickable. Now if we come back into available, do add label. 1, C, and then color.white. We're going to see nothing changed over here, at least visually, for each ticker. We come back over here to the custom quotes, though. We're going to see available is now grayed out. Okay, so that's the difference there. Available is now string text. Before it was, it was a number, now it's string. And so when we go to actually sort this doing a primary sort where we click on this, we're going to notice the difference because when we sort this by ascending, what you're going to see is 1 and then 101 and then 11. And we have 33 down here. And it's going to be all out of order. And this happens from time to time. I see a lot of people asking questions about this online. They say, why is this not working? And the reason is that it's string because we used add label. And so with string, it's looking at the very first character and it's sorting it only by the very first character. So one, one, and then it's just done with the one that goes to two and then three and then four. So if we were to come back in to available and get rid of this add label and just use plot, when we go to primarily sort that, now we see it's in the correct order. 
So one final thing I want to show here, just to show an example. So a plot is always a number. So if we go in here and try to add text to it, let's say close, we indicate a string by using the um, air quotes there around it. And then we would concatenate it together by using a plus sign. We're going to see that it returns an error, though. It says expected double. Okay, and so a double is means a number. So it's saying it expects a number in C. We can only have numbers here. So I've got average volume here. You can see I formatted this to show uh, 39.19 million instead of showing the whole number. And so I did this with an add label. And so we can sort based on this column, but it's going to require us to do two separate custom columns and then use the, the second one that we're going to format as a number and use that as the sort. So to show an example here, come in here. I've got two right here, average ball, and that's the one that's showing right now, and that's grayed out. And we've got another clickable one saying average ball number. So let's come in here and see, look at the codes. So average ball, you see, is using an add label here. And we're knocking off six zeros at the end of this using um, times 0 .000. And then we're adding it as a label and adding in this string text. And so it's reading this as a string. Whereas this av average ball number, I've indicated the little uh, hashtag there that it's a number. And I've commented out this add label, and I removed the 000. So it's reading this as a number. And so if I wanted to sort, do a secondary sort with average volume, I would come up here and choose this average volume by number. And then I would uh, scan. And I can do a primary on the earned date. And now we're going to see down here that for anything that's a tie, it's sorting it smallest to greatest by average volume. Now you'll notice we now have this column over here. And so that's going to be our big issue is that every time we go to run the scan, it's going to pop up this column here. And we're going to have to get rid of it because it's going to take up uh, part of our data limit. OK, so like with 21 stocks, no big deal, right? Like we can leave it there if we want. We can take it away. But if we have a lot of stocks, it might contribute to us reaching our data limit. So we might have to come in here and remove this every time. But that is one, the only way that we can have a column with something like this, where we have string text, and have it as a secondary sort. So I hope that helps you out in trying to get Thinkorswim to work. If you're into Thinkorswim and custom coding, you may want to check out the store. I have, I'll leave a link in the description below. I put codes on there that I've written myself and I use and find very useful. And uh, perhaps you find them useful as well. Also offer consulting. So if you have some sort of specific thing and you want to see if it's doable in Thinkorswim, uh, feel free to send me a message and we can uh, go from there.